Welcome back to another watercolor bird tutorial. Today we're painting a cardinal. This painting can be done as a standalone painting or if you're following along with this series you can paint it as the group of nine birds that I'm doing on my 12 by 12 inch Sennelier watercolor block. Colors you'll need for this project are a bright warm red. I'm going to be using Holbein Scarlet Lake or you can use a cadmium red light. I'll also be using Daniel Smith Indigo for my dark. Payne's Gray is a great substitute and then for some of the darker feathers inside of the bird I'll be using Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna. Let's get started. Make sure you have a small watercolor brush. I'll be using silver black velvet size 4 round brush, a water jar, and paper towel for blotting. And if you're doing the sketch along with me, be sure to grab a pencil. I like to use mechanical pencils because you don't have to sharpen them. They're just so convenient. They have an eraser. All right, so I've already done a mock-up sketch of my cardinal. He's going to be going right here next to this tufted titmouse on my design. He's facing to the left. You can see the back feathers of his body. It's a little bit different pose than some of the other cardinals I've painted in the past, so that's why I was attracted to it. And so having this designed out for me already really helps me with the sizing and placement of the bird so I don't make it either too small or too big or too far to the right. If you haven't already watched my video about planning out a composition like this where you have multiple subjects, go ahead and check that out right here. So start with a light over overall envelope shape of your bird. You could even start with the circular shape or the oval shape of the body. I'm going to draw a vertical oval right about here and I'm trying to match the size to my rough sketch below. I'm going to have the head coming almost to the top of the paper so the crest of his head is almost touching the top and then the tail feathers will come down a generous amount. All right, so I think I made his body just a little bit too tall, too oblong in this very light rough sketch. So now is your chance to modify and adjust if you feel like your drawing is off a little bit. So I'm shortening his body and bringing the beak down a little bit lower and that will help it so that the crest feathers are not completely off the paper. If we decide to frame this, we don't want some of his head cut off after all. Something else to plan is where you want to put lost and found edges. In my drawing here, I indicated a lost edge along the right side of the crest, and then I want to have a lost edge down here. So a couple of spots that are more in the light, that's where I'm going to lose the edges. So just keep those in mind as little areas you might want to erase in your drawing so that your paint isn't too strong or dark all around it. It's important to have a variety of edges for the best possible painting for the most interest and to help it really appear 3D. So once you're comfortable with the placement of everything, you can go in and start to sketch a little bit darker with stronger pencil marks. Erase any excess lines that you don't think you need. You may also indicate things like little highlights. For example, there's a bright shiny spot on the beak right there. And for sure, make sure to draw any distinctive markings that are important for the bird and the eye. Try to compare the size, the shape, the width of each mark to what you've already drawn. Base one good decision on the last good decision and you'll end up with a decent drawing. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can make it as realistic or as illustrative as you wish. So I just made the body a little too wide. I'm just tightening that up and marking where the red feathers meet the darker colored feathers. It's also going to be important to draw any distinctive feathers that you want to include, such as some of these wing feathers where we see some shine. They're really beautifully catching the light. And there's also a little cast shadow underneath each of these dark feathers. So that's what I'm sketching here is the shadow beneath each one. Now, as with this other bird that we did, we didn't include every single feather. We just suggested a few, and that was enough. And I think that's what I'm going to go for here on the cardinal as well. I don't want to be completely explicit with every single little shape in those wings. Not only will it drive me crazy, but it also will look a little bit overworked and overdone. So I want to make sure that I'm suggesting the feathers without overly rendering them. Now, I'm already going into a little more detail than I had planned, but... We can always knock that down with the paint. So now the tail feathers. If you're worried about how long they are, if maybe you're making them a little too long or a little too short, compare it to the width of the body. I think from what I can see here, the tail feathers are just slightly shorter than the overall width of the body. So you can decide for yourself the measurement of that tail feather. 
and then you can just suggest the little claw on a branch right there. And that's pretty much all we need to get started. Now, one more thing before I put my pencil and eraser away is I'm gonna erase this edge here because I want that to be a lost edge. And I'm gonna erase this edge right here, which I also want to be a lost edge. And then this little slight highlight along the belly. All right, I think we're ready to start painting. Now to help prevent any paint from getting on my nice white sheet of paper here, I'm gonna take some paper towel to protect it. I'm also gonna cover up this little guy so we don't accidentally spatter paint on him. All right, so with everything protected, we can go back in and start to paint. I'm just gonna take a tiny bit of tape and tape down that paper towel so it's not flying up and pestering me. Okay, so now I'm grabbing my silver black velvet size four round brush, and we're gonna start with some wet and wet just to get some color down. So swirl your brush in your clean water and paint the entire cardinal, just avoiding the eyes for now. And any highlights, such as that highlight on the beak, we wanna get a nice glossy surface that's prepared to smoothly disperse the paint. This is a cold press surface, so it does have some texture to it. You could also get away with using hot pressed. Hot pressed works really well if you're painting small like this and doing tiny details. So that might be a surface you prefer. It's really just a matter of preference. So if you want, you could even avoid the beak. Really, we're just gonna be focusing on the feathers for now. Now where we wanna have those lost edges, extend your water a little bit beyond, right here and right here. The key here is gonna to be to control your paint so that it doesn't overextend into that wet area. So you're gonna to need to figure out how much water and paint you need to have in your brush that will extend just to the right area so that it looks really soft along those edges without completely blowing out. Let's go ahead and take our Scarlet Lake or whatever bright red you've chosen for this project and begin to paint in the red of the Cardinal. My reference photo looks a little more orangey even than this, I think. If that's the case, you can always adjust your color by introducing a little bit of yellow to make it more orangey. I'm taking Gamboge Nova. I do think that's a better match. And we'll go over some of these areas with even a brighter color wet on dry. But for now, just get some color down. All right, leading up to that area where we want a lost edge, I'm gonna remove some paint so that there's very little on my brush and paint right up to it. So it's not gonna be a completely lost edge unless I remove some of the paint here, like that, lifting it back out. But the idea is that I want it to be really soft, almost disappear into the white of the paper. Now I'm just taking some light red and going over the back of the bird. Just with this almost pink color now that it's so watered down, getting some color down. You can mix in a little of your yellow again if you want it to look more like that orangey red. I'm going a little darker in the tail feathers since it's more of a pure red there. And if you see some excess bleeding happen like is happening here, you can take a clean brush and swipe along that edge to restore the white of the paper. Okay, while it's still wet, I'm gonna actually boost some color. I wanna make sure I don't have too much water in my brush, so I'm just dipping directly into the paint, making sure that it's not stopping wet at all. And I'm gonna really boost the red here, close to the eye especially. While the paper's still damp, it should soften out a little bit. But if it's beginning to dry, it may just stay put too. So you can always tell how wet your paper is by how much the paint is dispersing. And if it's not really moving, then it's already dried out. I'm gonna rinse some of that out and then soften out the edge of the paint that I just laid down. Since my paper's not wet anymore, I have to do a little bit of manual softening. Totally works though, it's just fine. Take some more Scarlet Lake and a little of that Gamboge Nova mixed in. I want a really bright red along the cheek, right here underneath the eye. 
Brilliant Scarlet, Cardinal Red. Now I didn't wet the beak at all, so if you want, you can take your red and go ahead and paint wet on dry, the dry paper, the beak of the bird. We'll start with bright red on the top, and then along the top of the, where the mouth opens up. Then I'm gonna take a little of my Gamboge Nova, paint that in the middle. If it's a little bright, remove some, dip on the paper towel so you don't have any extra water. Go ahead and paint in that beak. Remember to paint around the highlight. See this shiny spot on the bottom of the beak. And you can take some darker red along the underside so you have a slight value change from dark to light. Okay, so now let's take a little bit of brown. If you have transparent brown oxide, you could use that, or burnt sienna actually will work too. Let me show you the burnt sienna. It's a little more reddish than transparent brown oxide, but I'm gonna neutralize it a little bit with a tiny bit of ultramarine, which turns it more of a chocolatey brown. So I have this muted brown, and I'm gonna be begin painting the shadow side of the wings here in the left of the bird still a fairly light value. It's not anywhere close to how dark it needs to be, but now I'm going to begin painting around some of those highlighted wing feathers. We drew those on initially. Paint right up to the edge of your pencil mark, leaving a little gap right there. And you can see how it begins to look like shiny wing feathers. Cover the entire shadow side with your brown. And you can even let your brush scrape across the surface of the paper allowing some of the texture of the paper to shine through. This is suggesting the fuzzy look of those feathers. So we're leaving gaps, a little bit of the highlights of the paper. It's not pure white because we started with a layer of light Scarlet Lake, but it looks, it looks almost white after we start adding these dark values. Grab a little more red now. Mix that into the back of the bird. Just constantly refer to your photo for guidance on these color choices and changes in color temperature. Your photo has all the information you need. And I'm using my blue again to neutralize the brown. And using more of the belly side of the brush if I want to use broad sweeping motions. Try not to get too specific here. It would be easy to look at this reference photo and get overwhelmed with the details. Just try to squint at the photo and see the areas of the image that matter the most. The coloring or the shapes, particularly the shapes, that stand out the most are going to be the most important ones to really paint with strong brush strokes. I'm going to take some more red, drop that in, wet on wet now because we covered it with the brown. And I'm going to mix some of the red and some of the brown. So I have this dark reddish brown, a little bit of the blue, and we'll paint those tail feathers quite dark. Now try to leave a couple of strips of the white of the paper showing through, especially in the center of the feather. So we'll paint right up to that and then right along next to that, leaving a little sliver of white. And just like that, you have the suggestion of feathers without really having had to work too hard at it. it does take a little bit of control here, but not as much work as you might think. Now I'm taking the pure red and painting that right alongside the brown. And you can add little pops of red here and there, like along the side of the bird. And that was a little dark, so I'm going to remove some of that. If you're still unhappy, like I am, with some of the excess bleeding that happened along the neck here, you can do some lifting. Make sure that it's clean water. So for example, I have another jar here of actually clean water I'm going to dip a flat brush into, and then gently scrub along this edge. 
lifting some of that paint back out. Now to mix up a really dark shadow tone, I'm going to take my Daniel Smith Indigo, that's this dark blue here. You could also use Payne's Gray. I'm going to mix it with some of that brown I already have on my palette and paint the dark shadow on the left side of the bird. Even though I'm painting a whole series of birds here, they're all different reference photos from different locations, so the light source might be slightly different on them. We're not going to try to pretend that these birds are all in the same place at the same time, so don't worry if the light source looks different from one photo to the next. I'm not going to let myself stress over that. It's just a fun collage of birds. All right, so that dark shadow is really helping our birds start to pop off the page. Be sure to paint just a couple little hints of feathers here, a couple little brush strokes in the shadows that you drew out with your pencil, if you did that. You can reiterate those, but not too much. Use a feathering motion with your brush so it's not too dark. Just little hints, little suggestions. And then for the beak, let's take a dark again. I'm going to take indigo one more time and mix it with that brown. I want a really pretty much black color in my brush. And we'll paint that distinctive black mark surrounding the cardinal's beak. I want to slow down here and paint carefully. We are drawing with our paint. The drawing is not finished with the sketch. We still have to be careful when we apply paint, even if we carefully drew everything on. We have to be just as careful with our brush, not to accidentally make it too wide or too narrow. So still looking at my reference photo for guidance. All right, here around the eye, there's a ring of light. So I'm gonna let my brush miss that little ring, paint negative paint around it. And, ooh, so tiny. Gotta be so careful here leaving the highlight of the eye untouched by paint. And if it's starting to dry out, I'm gonna dip in the water a little bit just to help it slide and glide across the paper a little easier. And I also wanted a slightly lighter value on my brush at this point. But there we go, we've got this pretty little eye drawn right in. I'm gonna take a tiny bit more of my dark paint and reiterate the separation or the opening of the mouth here and darken the shadow on the crest of his head. If you wish, you can add a little bit of fuzzy feather texture. What I like to do is load my brush with some paint. I'm gonna take this brown here and then spread out the bristles. Now I've mostly dried my brush so there's not any extra water in it. And this is called the dry brush technique where you just scrape your brush across the surface of the paper with damp paint and it'll catch on the surface of the paper, allowing some of the texture to really look cool, giving the illusion of textured feathers on the bird itself. And we don't really have to work that hard at it with this technique. So I've rinsed out some of that paint now. And once again, I'm just letting my brush jump and glide and scrape across the surface of the paper for some fuzzy texture. Let's take some more brown now and come back to these feathers. It needs to be darker, the whole body really. So we're gonna add a third layer at this point of brown. Bump it right up next to that dark. And just darken the whole feather, the whole backside. Got a dark feather right here. Still glancing at my reference photo, but I'm not being overly cautious. I'm trying to leave some of the highlights that I preserved initially, but I felt like I almost had too many and it was almost looking too detailed. So with this layer, I'm sort of knocking down those details while still letting some of the highlights show through and darkening the whole thing. All right, let's add one more layer to this tail feather. A little bit more dark paint. <laughs> I 
Yes, there we go. Okay, so we did some spatter with our little tufted titmouse over here. So we're gonna do the same thing with our cardinal and I'm gonna stick with my orange color. Before I do that though, I'm gonna erase some of this excess pencil around the beak, clean that up a little. And then we're gonna use transparent orange. This is a Windsor Newton color, I just love it. I'm gonna swirl it around with some water in my palette. Once again, making sure that I've protected everything around it. And then I'm gonna take my two fingers here and just gently tap. And we're putting a little bit of spatter down, giving it this wonderful whimsical effect. Now I'm gonna rinse some of that out so I have a lighter co colored orange. And over here we did a couple of manual little circles. I'm gonna do that next to our cardinal too. Ooh, that's too dark. So I'm gonna remove some of that, make it light, light orange circle. Just this spatter effect, it looks so pretty. Remember that you are the artist, you can push and pull and play with these circles as much as you want. You can make them look more watery if you wish. Completely up to you. And then one last thing will be to extend this imaginary branch over here. Not too far, I don't wanna encroach upon the next bird I'll be painting. But that way it looks like he's got some weight to him and he's sitting on something. But there we go. Yay, so there's the second bird in our series of birds. I had so much fun painting this cardinal with you guys. I hope you enjoyed it too. Stay tuned for the next bird in this series and I'll see you there.